A Marion County Family Court judge strikes down a domestic violence protective order filed against state trooper whistleblower Corporal Joseph Comer. Now that move came after Comer's accuser, the mother of his child and fellow trooper Vicki Mara, requested the DVP be removed because she has no longer, has, doesn't fear him any longer. But sources tell Eyewitness News there is much more to the story involving Mara's superiors at the state and police, uh, state police and some members of the agency's former leadership team. Lead investigative reporter Kenny Bass joins us in studio with exclusive details you will only find here. Kenny? Well, Gina, Dave, the domestic violence protective order impacting Corporal Joseph Comer originated from two alleged instances at December child custody exchanges in Ritchie County. But we've learned from several sources that State Trooper Vicki Mara went much further in chats with state police investigators than she revealed today in family court. A short 25-minute hearing at the Marion County Courthouse did away with the domestic violence protective order, which had limited Corporal Joseph Comer's visitations and contact with his young son. The mother of Comer's child, West Virginia State Police Trooper Vicki Mara, had previously testified Comer put his hands around her throat at a December Ritchie County custody exchange, and a week later, Comer allegedly threw a sippy cup at Mara, bruising her head. Today, Mara petitioned to terminate the protective order, which was issued March 15th, officially saying she was no longer in fear for her safety and wanted Comer to resume his parenting time with their son. The judge took uh, some evidence, she asked some questions, verified some things on the record, and uh, ultimately it was dismissed. Sources tell Eyewitness News that under questioning by state police investigators, Mara revealed that her first sergeant, K.W. Huddleston, ordered that she file for the DVP. Additionally, Mara allegedly told investigators that she was encouraged by high-ranking state police administrators, including the agency's former superintendent, Colonel Jan Cahill, to initiate legal action against Comer. My sources right now, who are very reliable sources, are telling me that she has fully recanted um, and that uh, she is pretty much stating that she was ordered to, to get the DVP and she was ordered to, uh, to comply with the criminal case um, by her first sergeant. The corporal revealed exclusively to Eyewitness News that he was the whistleblower who penned a multi-page anonymous letter outlining serious allegations of state police wrongdoing, including placing a video camera in the women's locker room of the state police training academy, theft, and sexual misconduct. Mara also reportedly told investigators that Huddleston helped form the criminal complaint and that the first sergeant misrepresented a photograph of Mara with markings on her neck. Mara said the markings had nothing to do with an assault by Comer, but Huddleston said it was bruising, which indicated the corporal had attempted to strangle Mara. Huddleston also allegedly deleted timestamp information on the photo, which would have contradicted the timing of the accusations. The photograph that was used, um, there is evidence right now to show that um, the first sergeant knew or should have known. Um, there, it was date and time stamped and it was cropped off when it was given to the uh, magistrate uh, as evidence in Ritchie County. Uh, it does not correspond with what she said happened and when she said it happened. Uh, and she is recanted as to what those bruises actually are. And she told the first Sergeant Huddleston where they came from, and he said it didn't matter that he was going to do that anyhow. So with the DVP now terminated, we contacted the Ritchie County Prosecutor's Office to ask about the status of the criminal charges against Corporal Joseph Comer. We were told that Prosecutor Samuel Rogers II was in court this afternoon and that he would get back to us as soon as he was available. We are still waiting to hear from... Mr. Rogers, about how he plans to move forward with the Comer case. Reporting live in the studio with this Eyewitness News investigation, I'm Kenny Bass. Thanks so much for watching. Here's another video from Eyewitness News. Just click right here to subscribe to our channel and make sure you hit that bell notification to get the very latest.